The question of this episode is why does the color of menstrual blood differ sometimes? Now period blood isn't just blood, it's also mucus, cervical fluid and some minerals and proteins even as we learned before. So it's normal that the color of your menstrual fluid changes over the course of your period. Darker colors like brown or black may look concerning but it just indicates older blood that has had time to oxidize and turns darker. Bright red blood would just mean fast flowing blood that is fresher and pink or orangish blood might just mean that the blood is diluted by cervical fluid or mucus. Sometimes the fluid might be too watery or even have clots in it but it is all normal. Though if you see something that you haven't seen before and have other symptoms like pain, bad odor, itching or discharges of other colors that you're not used to, it's a great idea to drop a quick visit to your gynecologist for a quick lookup. Today's question is, why do people bleed different amounts of blood during their periods? Just like every person is different, so are our uteruses and our periods. Some people bleed so little, they only use two pads a day, while some use up to five. In fact, all of it is normal. Bleeding up to 80 ml or one third of a cup per period is normal. If it goes above that or your period lasts for more than seven days at a time, it might be menorrhagia or heavy menstrual bleeding and might be a matter of concern. This heavy bleeding may be accompanied by pain, fatigue with a number of other reasons for the same. And if you have something like this, please go to your doctor immediately to avoid any serious consequences. know the ins and outs of a period, but what if something goes wrong during our periods? In this episode and the next two, we will discuss different common period abnormalities. Today let us discuss dysmenorrhea. So dysmenorrhea basically means painful periods. Many menstruators around the globe experience this either before, after or during their periods. Now this can be just as a side effect of uterine contractions because of prostaglandins as we learned in episode 7 or they can be due to a more serious condition like endometriosis or tumors. But not to worry, most dysmenorrhea Menorrhea can be relieved by exercise, hot compress and medication like ibuprofen. There is evidence that vitamin B1 and magnesium supplementation can help. And of course, if the pain is too much to bear and is associated with other symptoms like nausea, vomiting and excessive bleeding, please visit your doctor. discuss painful periods in the last episode, continuing our period problem saga, let us talk about amenorrhea, which is the absence of periods. Now, amenorrhea can be of two types, primary and secondary. Primary is when one doesn't have periods till the age of 15 or 16 and that may be due to hormonal issues or some anatomical anomalies like a completely sealed hymen. Secondary is when one gets their periods during puberty but after that it stops for more than 3 months or so. This can be due to PCOS, thyroid issues and other hormonal imbalances and even some medications like contraceptive pills. But amenorrhea isn't always bad. One of the major causes of amenorrhea is pregnancy and even lactation can cause it. So if you experience absence of periods, it's always a great idea to go to the doctor and get some blood work done to evaluate what is going on. Continuing the saga of period problems, let us discuss menorrhagia or also called heavy menstrual bleeding. The causes are multiple, ranging from fibroids to tumors to cancer to even pelvic inflammatory diseases and hormonal issues like PCOS or STDs. But let us focus on what defines heavy menstrual bleeding. Normal menstrual bleeding is up to 80 ml per period. So any period where you bleed more than 80 ml or soak a tampon or pad within 2 hours instead of the normal 3 to 5 hours or if you have to wake up to change a tampon or pad in the middle of the night or if you bleed for more than 7 days, it's an indication to menorrhagia. And remember, any form of menorrhagia is not normal. So if you experience any of these symptoms, do visit a doctor. Today, let us talk about menstrual migraines. So any migraines that occur during periods or right before or after them can be categorized as menstrual migraines. Menstrual migraines are not like normal migraines as in they are not associated with an aura which involves sensitivity to light or sound before the start of the migraine and hence they can start abruptly. They are also not relieved easily with painkillers and rest like normal migraines but they also do occur as a throbbing pain on one side of the head like a usual migraine. They can be associated with things like nausea, fatigue, bloating 
bloating etc their cause isn't entirely known but they are said to occur because of the dip in estrogen people who have menstrual migraines may also experience other things like asthma fibromyalgia etc so it's always a great idea to go talk to your physician about your migraines and establish a good treatment module So let us discuss PCOS today. We have a whole series on PCOD and PCOS on our Sathi blog, so make sure you check it out for an in-depth understanding and ways to tackle it. For this episode, let us get the basics down. So there are multiple definitions of PCOS, but basically it involves oligoovulation or anovulation, which means Less or absent ovulation, which can be seen as absent periods or skipping periods over a few months. Ovaries might have cysts appear on ultrasound. And lastly, there's hormonal imbalance, which can be excess androgens, aka testosterone, or even imbalance with insulin. So it is important to understand that it is a multifactorial, lifelong illness that needs a holistic treatment approach. Good diet, exercise, supplements, mental health support, and a healthy, steady support system is what helps tackle PCOS. We have already discussed mood swings in an episode before. So today, let us dive deeper into the world of PMS, premenstrual syndrome. There are a plethora of symptoms involved in PMS, breast tenderness, fatigue, mood swings, bloating, anxiety, irritability, etc. And they usually start one or two weeks before a period and end as soon as the period starts. About 3% of menstruators experience a more severe version of PMS called PMDD, which stands for Premenstrual Dysphoric Disorder, which involves severe depressive spells associated with the timings of PMS. Either way, the best way to deal with them is to lessen stress by involving meditation and other calming activities in your routines, improve sleep routines and exercise, have a healthier diet, and lessen caffeine and salt intake. Some people are even recommended antidepressants for their emotional symptoms but as always please consult your physician and get checked if you suspect PMS and PMDD. Let us discuss endometriosis today. So the uterus has three layers and the innermost one is called endometrium. When one has endometriosis, cells similar to the endometrium grow in other parts of the bodies like the ovaries, fallopian tubes, around the uterus and even the intestines, bladder and the diaphragm under the lungs. This can cause heavy bleeding with excruciating pain during periods and people can experience pain during urinating, bowel movements or even during sex. Infertility is another very common symptom. This is usually managed with hormonal therapy along with painkillers and sometimes surgical excision might be required. But if any of you out there experience heavy bleeding during periods with immense pain or experience chronic pelvic pain even in the absence of pain, periods, please get in touch with your physician and get evaluated. Check out our blog to learn more about menstrual disorders. Today's question is, can you get pregnant while on your period? The quick answer is yes. Let us take a dive into understanding why. So, a menstrual cycle on an average lasts for 28 days, but some people have a menstrual cycle that's 21 days long or even shorter than that at times. The sperm, once it enters the body, can stay and survive in the fallopian tubes for up to 5 days. So, sometimes it could happen that there can be fertilization because of early ovulation and the sperm still surviving in the body. But then again, this occurrence is rare and very conditional. Yet it is still advisable that if you do not want to get pregnant while having sex, period or otherwise, it is good to use protection. And it also protects you against sexually transmitted infections. What other period abnormalities do you have questions about? Comment below and let us know.